Arkansas Attorney General Tim Griffin recently approved four Arkansas people's ballot proposal, which would allow an abortion measure to be put on the November 2024 ballot. But of course, they must first get enough signatures. Here to talk about that with us today is founder and president of Family Council, Jerry Cox. Hi, Jerry. Hey, it's so good to be with you. Always enjoy being on your show. and Just appreciate the good work you do to get the truth out. Well, Jerry, we really appreciate you. And of course, you are a friend of Conduit. And we wouldn't have anyone else here to talk about this. You know, I was thinking I, the last time that we had you on Conduit, I believe was when Roe v. Wade was overturned. And I remember vividly, that was a wonderful day. But we also talked about how um, as much as we were celebrating that day, the work was not done. And here we are yet again. Well, there's a group of very liberal Democrats who have crafted a misleading amendment to the Arkansas Constitution that would effectively enshrine abortion into our state constitution and it would shackle the hands of the legislature or any other lawmakers to regulate abortions. And so this is an extreme measure. It's part of this bigger, broader assault on our values. And I think we all feel that, you know, with the books in the libraries and what's taught in the schools and the LGBT trans everything, just add this to the list. It's, yeah. it's part of that overall assault on our traditional values. And they're really trying to ruin our good state and our, our, our good environment that we have here. And so we're against it, obviously. Uh, we don't need to enshrine abortion into the Constitution. We don't need to make abortion legal during the entire nine months of pregnancy. We don't need to make it so that you don't have to be a doctor to perform an abortion. Uh, we don't need to make an environment where 14-year-old girls can sneak off and get an abortion and mom and dad never know about it. Yeah. Never be told. No parental consent. Um, we could just go on and on about all the bad that will happen if this amendment passes. Now, they're still not there yet. Yeah. They got to gather 90,000 signatures by July. And if they can, they have a shot at getting on the ballot. And then they still have to get people to vote for it. But boy, I hope people will just say, you know what? I ain't signing that petition. Uh, we're not going to we're not going to play that game with you guys. And they're trying to make it sound very benign. It just, uh, you know, restricts abortion a little bit and all that. And it's just not true. It's a bait and switch. Yeah. Talk to us. You 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 went over kind of the highlights of it. Um, but talk to us specifically about this measure. I think that, like you mentioned, the verbiage it does sound very innocuous. It does sound very benign. It talks about, you know, the role of limited government and healthcare and um, and that sort of thing. And so I think for your average Arkansan who's reading it, it's like, you know what? And I think for a lot of moderates, I, I think that this is such a defining issue that they're, that um, across a country going into 2024 elections, especially Democrats, they want to get this on the ballot to, because if you're looking at on the national stage, Biden is not going to draw people out, but this certainly will, um, especially for moderates. Um, and, I, you know, I was thinking about this before our interview, even Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley said, um, quote, in one of the in one of the um, the debate, she said, we're going to have to have a compromise to make anything happen abortion is a big issue right now. And so for people who may not be as well versed when they're mm. looking at this amendment, what do they need to look at and really understand about this? Well, to put it plainly, abortion has two victims. It has the woman who is in a crisis pregnancy of some sort where she's pregnant, maybe she's already got kids, maybe she's not married, she feels like she she's backed against the wall. She's looking for a way out. And unfortunately, for a lot of women, they can only see run down to the abortion clinic and terminate the life of the unborn child, take the life of the baby. If you've ever seen an ultrasound, you know that's a person living in the wood. And there are better ways than going and getting an abortion. There are almost 60 
pregnancy help organizations all around the state of Arkansas. They will uh, help adopt a child out. They'll help a woman carry a child to term. They'll provide diapers and formula and cribs and car seats and help her find a job and all kinds of things like that. And so, Jenny, I, I, I believe there are really good alternatives out there. And you know what? The abortion just starts more problems because you can't escape the fact that there was a person living inside the womb and you terminated that life and you have to live with that the rest of your days. Yeah. And I've talked to too many women who have deep, deep scars from that. And so we need to have a lot of sympathy for women that are hurting. We need to give them alternatives, but my goodness, allowing abortion just for all kinds of reasons through an entire pregnancy that creates danger for all kinds of people around the state. And it gives the abortion industry just a heyday here in Arkansas. We don't want to be known as an abortion destination. We want yeah. to be known for a lot of other good things. One thing that I'm really concerned about with this amendment is it says that no government can regulate abortion. And um, does this mean that really abortion and abortion could happen all the way up to nine months of pregnancy? Well, you know, see, when it says the government can't regulate it, what does that mean? Well, it sounds to me yeah. like the government can't regulate it. And that opens up all kinds of questions like um, health department inspections of the abortion clinics. Does that mean the health department can't go in and see if the place is dirty? Um, it might be. So it kind of sounds like it to me. And in the hands of a liberal judge, that's probably how it would end up. And so the thing that makes abortion legal for the entire nine months in this amendment is that it has a bunch of language in there about health, the woman's mm -hmm. health. Okay. And it says if the doctor decides that for good health reasons or health reasons that an abortion would be necessary, then they can do it. Well, the abortion doctor makes his living doing abortions. So, you know, if a woman comes in and she's got high blood pressure, well, that can be life-threatening. And maybe terminating the pregnancy is a way to alleviate that. So sure, you got high blood pressure, get yourself an abortion all the way through the nine months of pregnancy, all the way through. And mm -hmm. so we really want to see fully developed babies being killed in the abortion facilities. Are we ready for that? Are we ready yeah. for that? I don't think so, but that's what this amendment would allow. Talk to us about the role of the legislature then as well. Like wh what would this remove? Right now we are one of the most pro-life states in the country. Where would this take us? Well, I think it, it, it leads to all the laws that we have that restrict abortion being negated because it says the government can't regulate it, yeah. can't restrict it, uh, can't deny it, all that. So the laws about uh, notifying women, telling them here are the risks of an abortion, here's how far along you are, here's the ultrasound, here's your alternatives to abortion. I believe all that goes out the window because that's a regulation or that is a requirement. I think that goes away if this amendment passes. I think the whole thing about um, if a child survives the abortion, the abortion doctors are obligated to try to save the life of that child. And late-term abortions, some babies do live through it. They are born alive. They're kicking and trying to live. And there have been horrible stories of them just putting those babies in a cold room and letting, letting them die of hypothermia. Our law says you have to save the lives of those babies. I don't know where that law goes if this amendment passes. I think it goes away. And you, you, so there are so many things that this would lead to that the average voter probably doesn't just doesn't know about. Wow. And we need to tell people about it. You know, one thing that we hear a lot um, with the rhetoric is abortion is health care. Uh, what yeah. would you say to that? I can't well, even wrap my brain around that. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not laughing at, at abortion, but I, that is such no. a ludicrous. That is such a ludicrous statement to say yes. that taking the life of a 
healthy unborn child mm -hmm. that's living in the womb of a healthy young woman somehow is health care. Yeah. Pregnancy is not a disease. Right. And it's not a condition that people could say, well, you're you're sick because you're pregnant. There are some sick people that are pregnant. And we have laws that uh, address abortions to save the life of the mother and all of that, all of that. But this whole thing of saying, well, the baby's healthy, the mother's healthy, everything's great. You need some health care here to take the life of your baby. That just doesn't make sense. That's nonsensical. Mm -hmm. um, recently on Face a Nation over the past weekend, they really tried to nail Governor Sanders um, and put her on the spot for Arkansas's maternity, uh, maternal mortality rate. Um, March of Dimes uh, gave Arkansas an F for the preterm births. But, you know, we've made great strides in Arkansas. Talk to us about the pregnancy help organizations and what Arkansas has done uh, recently. Well, um, the things that Arkansas is doing right now is putting their money behind uh, pregnancy help organizations. The last two years, the legislature has appropriated a million dollars each year to be given out in grants to organizations that are helping women and girls who have an unplanned crisis pregnancy, people that need adoption services, people that need foster care. They're putting money into that and helping those organizations get bigger, better, stronger, do more, help more people. And to me, that's the long-term solution mm. is we, we need to reduce the demand for yeah. abortion. Just imagine if people just said, you know what? We don't need that anymore. Uh, yeah. we, you know, that's, that's old stuff. And I think we can get there by giving people choices that will enable them to give their baby life. You know, Jenny, I'm grateful that I've had a chance. I had a chance to be born and had a shot at life. And yeah. I've been living all these years. Don't we owe the unborn the very same thing that we all got? Why would we take that away from them just because it's hard on us? Yeah. Sometimes we have to make the sacrifices and we can make those sacrifices easier for women with those pregnancies by providing them with job training, providing them with adoption services and diapers and formula and cribs and car seats and medical care and all that. And that's available through pregnancy centers if people would just look for it and go 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 find it. Yeah. What can people do if they want to get involved um, to to combat this amendment um, and to raise awareness? What what do people need to do? What do they need to know? Well, first of all, the uh, people, the liberal Democrats who have crafted this are going to be out walking around with clipboards and petitions, and they're going to come up to you somewhere and ask you to sign this amendment to provide reproductive freedom or something like that, mm -hmm. some catchphrase. And that should be your cue to say, no, I'm sorry, not going to sign that, don't support it. And um, we, we need to decline to sign and we need to tell other people about this. So they're not misled. And here in Arkansas, we're pretty polite. A lot of times we want to be accommodating and Oh, I'll sign your petition just to make you feel better. No, not this time, not for this one, because there's too much at stake. We need to be strong and say, no, nope, not going to sign that. And if they're out in front of a store that where you do business, go in and tell the manager, say, Hey, I, I don't appreciate the fact that those people are out there gathering those signatures for that awful amendment. And um, we, we need to make our voices heard. Uh, once the campaigns against this get underway, Family Council, our organization, uh, is about to file with the Ethics Commission to launch a campaign. So will Right to Life. So will others. There will be opportunity to give money, get involved, help out, spread the word. If you go to church, have it announced in your church and talked about so that people there uh, are not misled. The Bible says that the devil kills, steals, and destroys. That is what this amendment yeah. does. Yeah, I was going to ask you about churches. I know sometimes pastors are um, leery of getting involved, especially in political issues, but um, this is exactly the moment that we need pastors to take a stand and get involved. If not now, you know, then when? So 
I hope that they. Well, I hope that they do. yeah, and and we we need to understand that this is not like a candidate race. That's Churches right. Churches can hammer the daylights out of issues, and this is an yeah. issue. Yeah. And you can talk about it all day long. You can preach on it. You can pass out flyers. That's right. Traditionally, churches have spoken out on issues like uh, gambling and others over the years. And no church in Arkansas or anywhere else I know of has ever been slapped by the IRS for speaking out on an issue like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, don't let leadership in your church hide behind that. And say, oh, well, it's political. We can't talk about it. No, I would say it's moral. Abortion mm -hmm. is a moral issue, and that is church territory, and we need to talk about it all day long as much as we can. Absolutely. Anything else you want to add, Jerry, before we let you go? Well, I think it's important for all of us as Christians to step up and say, what can I do to reduce the demand for abortion in Arkansas? Because that is a real issue, mm -hmm. and there's always lots to do there, and we can be our brother's keeper. To those who are libertarian and say, you know what, I don't need an abortion. I'm never going to get one, but I'm not going to stop somebody else from getting one. I tell you what, when you think about that statement, if they are going to take the life of their unborn child and you're going to turn and look the other way while they do that and say, well, that's their right. I'm not going to get involved. I think we're missing it big time right there because we need to create a place where all life is is sacred and and uh, respected and preserved. Yeah. And if we look the other way on that and say, well, that's somebody else's business, I think we're missing it big time. Absolutely. Jerry, thank you so much. And thank Family Council for everything that you guys do. Well, we're glad to be able to help and do our part. And we appreciate everybody who helps us. Appreciate you helping us by having us on your show and we're glad to be be there with you anytime anyplace all right we'll talk soon thank you bye-bye